in my previous videos, I've showed you guys in live action how to edit a video, but this time I could not show you guys in live action. So instead, I'll be doing a little voiceover in order to talk you guys through exactly what I'm doing and how I do it. The first thing you want to do is cut your video. So here I'll be doing a auto cut where you right click and you just go to scene edit detection and hit analyze. And what that does for you is just making sure that it cuts your video up on every cut. So I did take a video from Lyrical Lemonade. All right, once that's chopped up, we're just going to highlight the entire thing and we're going to move it over. We moved it over because we don't want to delete the entire thing or the orientation of the video. So we're just going to move it over and we're going to take copies of what we need. Now, with any music video, you need to make sure you're on beat. In order to do that, just press M on your keyboard at each beat, I hat, clap, anything that you want to match your edit to. Once we've separated all of our clips, we're just going to align it to the beat markers that we made. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. All you do is drag it to each point, each marker, cutting your clips on the beat in a stylistic way. And this is not going to be the final arrangement of the video. This is just what we need to get a rough draft of what the music video should look like. You do the entire clip. So usually music videos are three to four minutes, do the entire four minutes exactly how you'd like it. And then at the end, we're going to bring it over to After Effects. Now what we need to do is highlight the entire clip, right click and just press replace with After Effects composition. We're going to save it as whatever we like. And then as you guys can see, our entire clips are brought over to After Effects. Now what's running through my brain at this point is rearranging the clips so that they're in order. Just making sure that I can see exactly how the video is playing out. All right, so now we're going to duplicate this layer and bring it to the top. We're going to create a quick flash transition. You guys will see this a lot the same way as cloning something, you know, bring it in the frames before or the outline of that person in the previous scene. This is exactly how you would do it. So now that we copy it, now we're going to grab our Rota brush tool and we're going to cut our person out. And again, I'm teaching you guys how to do stuff like this so you guys can get paid to do it as well. Typically, you'll see this a lot where the legs, if they're not in frame and they pop up, it's not going to be that good. But as you can see, I just fixed it in that first frame where it showed us. Now we're going to freeze this frame into position. All that does is make sure no matter what, it does not move or rotor brush. It doesn't accidentally re rotos another portion of Yeet. Duplicate that layer one more time and we're going to freeze frame it. All freeze frame does is it holds that exact frame. And again, this is basically 80% of every video editing or music videos that have these kind of edits. And we just need to go back to our main comp because right now we're in the layer composition. I didn't notice until a little bit after. So now we're doing something a little bit different from before. We're still wanting to cut eat out, but instead of doing the rotor brush, we'll be using the pen tool. The pen tool is a little bit more accurate in terms of you don't have to worry about knowing where the rotor brush will be. The pen tool goes to exactly where you put it. If you've ever used the pen tool in like Photoshop or anything else, it's basically the same thing. And we're just going to move it around. If you've never used it before, just understand when you drag that little corner out, it creates a curve. But if you don't understand how to create the curve with it, you don't have to just press and keep going. You don't have to move your mouse after you click. Right, once we link this up, you'll see that it's showing the behind scene of what we have. And again, what I want to do is create the flash. And in order to do that, we're just going to type in contrast and we're going to click on contrast right here onto our layer that we want to change the contrast of. And we just need to reset these points so that we can create completely white and completely black outlines by dragging it from the bottom left all the way to the bottom right. We get the completely black and then from dragging it from the bottom left to the top left, we get completely white. Now to make everything look a little bit better, usually when you're working in After Effects, you want to make sure you're pre-composing all your layers because having this many layers just looks very annoying. Once you finish each section, just go ahead and pre-compose it, name it whatever you want, don't name it. But by pre-composing it after you're done with each section, it just makes it a little bit more easier to work with. 
Next, what we want to do is we want to animate this by having it swipe in at some point. So we're going to turn on our motion blur. Motion blur is everything you need to turn on your motion blur in After Effects. Here's the thing about motion blur. Not everything needs motion blur. So only stuff that you plan on animating to look a little bit more realistic, turn on motion blur. Lock in the final position of our animated cutout of Yeet. And we need to go a couple frames back and then animate where we want it to start from. Then the number one thing to do in After Effects almost every time is if you do any kind of keyframing is you highlight the whole thing and then you press F9 and that will just make everything look a little bit more smoother and you can have a better control of how your animation looks. If I still have you guys with me, I hope I don't lose you in this next step. We're going to edit the speed graph. And again, if you've never worked with a speed graph, don't worry. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. If the peak of the graph goes all the way up or all the way down, just know that's going to be the fastest point. And the closer it is to zero, the slower it gets. Just play with the graph. It doesn't have to be perfect. Adjusting the graph does make it look a lot more appealing. All right, now we're at a point in the video where I need to explain to you guys. I'll not show you guys every single time I make the same kind of edit only because it's just going to make the video extremely long. So I'm going to show you guys how to do the same edit maybe once or twice. But after that, we'll skip it over. And when it comes to doing something new, I'll definitely stop and I'll explain how I did that. Now we just need to create this liquid slash blob effect and it's pretty simple. It's built into After Effects so you don't need to download any plugins. All you have to do is go to your effects panel, click on the mercury and mess with those adjustments. Just mess with the numbers and I promise you it will look pretty dope and pretty unique. So along with the mercury, what I'm going to add on here is the change color and this will just change the hue of the, the blob just to make it a little bit more colorful instead of the natural color. So we're going to change it to green and then we're going to also add a glow. We're going to use a standard After Effects glow because for me, I think that works pretty well. I don't need to download Sapphire, even though Sapphire is pretty good, maybe one day. So while editing it, I did notice that I missed this little section of showing you guys how to make it shoot out at you. Go to this uh, effect. I'm going to leave it on screen because I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Go to that effect and adjust the variables and I promise you, you'll get the same effect. I want to explain this little portion where I have you going back and forth, even though I showed you guys how to do the freeze frame and how to animate it. But it's the same exact way as adjusting the position, using your keyframes and having him bounce on either side. So in this next section, again, all you have to do is do your freeze frame and do your cut of wherever you want to zoom in. The only difference between this and everything else, instead of doing the regular XY positioning, we're going to add another variable. So we're going to turn on our 3D effect and this just allows it to be in a 3D space. And the reason why I do the 3D space instead of just making the image larger is because it does look a little bit better. So we adjust that 3D in and out. Again, this will be a little bit slower so you guys can see how I did that. And we're just going to go all the way through and we're going to zoom right through into the next clip. In addition to that, I do want to have it create like a little tunnel. Um, the best way to do that instead of creating multiple different uh, clips is duplicating your layer and offsetting them. By offsetting it, it just makes it delayed so it looks like it's going through multiple or through a tunnel. The next big thing I do want to show you guys is having that Lamborghini logo jump up and flying up onto the screen. It is positioning, so it's not difficult, but I do want to slow down and explain how I did that for you guys. I just downloaded the Lamborghini logo off Google. I did the PNG with no background version, so it's easier and it's fully in clarity. Uh, the reason why you don't sometimes cut out what you see, unless it's pretty much in 
clear view and you can see the full details, you want to usually download whatever that logo is because it just looks better. And we're going to do some tracking to make sure it looks like it's actually there. All right. So we're just going to animate it and we're going to push it right onto it. We're going to zoom in to make sure it's right on there. We're going to adjust those keyframes to make it look like it's actually zooming back onto the car. And now you're going to see me add this glow effect. All this glow effect does is just making it pop just a little bit more, just giving it that little flare. Now, in order to do the tracking, we are going to do track motion and then we're going to turn on all three. We're going to turn on our position, rotation and scale. And all that does is it changes the shape of the picture as it goes in. But we do need to create a null. As you guys can see, I already created a null. The null is basically a blank file that we're going to put our track points or our tracking systems into. And then we're going to do something called pick whipping. You're never going to use this a lot necessarily. When you use the pick whip tool, it attaches itself to whatever you um, drag that video to. It copies the same attributes to some extent. So as you can see, I'm going to pick whip this to that null after I applied it. And all that allows for me to do is the whole time it's going to be tracking onto the car as soon as it it hits. Now, what you see me doing is I'm adjusting the angle, the rotation as much as possible to make sure it looks like it's actually on the car, because the last thing you want is to see some jitter or some shake off of the car. And again, just adjusting those speed graphs. I highlighted all these graphs just to make sure I'm adjusting them simultaneously, because if you only adjust one, it's going to look a little bit off. So we highlight those corners that we need and adjust all of them. I don't know if you guys noticed this. I did skip a little bit in the video. So all those different adjustment layers that you see in the Premiere profile and then you see those separate audio files. I did start creating the sound design and then those adjustment layers are just random shakes from the shake pack that I have. It is not out yet. Unfortunately, guys, I did send some presets, some free presets to anyone that signed up to the email. Not everyone got them. I did send a few. If you guys want some free presets, you can sign up on my website. The link is in the description. After rewatching the video a couple of times, I did notice that I want to add some more motion or life to the emblem flying up. I'm going to change the emblem to a 3D particle, just making sure that I can adjust it or rotate it however I feel. And then I'm going to do some more keyframing there. All right. Lastly, in this video tutorial, I know this was a long one, but I do hope you guys did gather a lot from this video. I spent a couple hours doing this. And again, if you guys want to get access to the Patreon whenever I create it. I haven't created it yet. If you guys want me to post it on YouTube, just leave it in the comments and I'll post the long form videos. See how that does. Maybe you guys will get more long form of the entire explanation video of me recording or creating in real time. In this last one, all we're going to do is cut out and keyframe his position on his glasses and do that uh, nice zoom through effect. And now we just give our video one last watch just to make sure everything is good. And again, you guys will notice that I didn't put in everything in terms of tutorial wise that I created in the final video. And that's only because my recording, my OBS crapped out at some point and didn't record the final part. So if you guys see anything that wasn't in this video, leave it down in the comments and I can create another video on how I did those effects. <laughs> I do appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys.